Here we go. Five, four, three, two, four. Here we go. Welcome to our meeting. Hey, uh, glad you're here. Thanks for thanks for coming. I don't know if y'all know this, but we are less than 170 days out from our trip. Okay. Now this is where it starts getting for real. Okay. So up until this point, there's been a whole lot of hey, we're really excited about going on this trip. And what we do is we go ahead and we start booking hotel rooms and getting airplanes and tickets and. We start doing everything for those people who say, yeah, we're excited about going. And then you get about one or two cycles of payments due and people start going, well, you know, I, I don't really know if I'm 100% going. Well, by this point, I need you to know if you're 100% going. This, this is, we're, we're putting money on tickets and all that kind of stuff. All right, so we're getting, we're getting really close. Now, here's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna run down every single time we meet, I'm trying to run down uh, I got it broken up over all the times we'll meet. Just, just different facts you need to know going around, okay? Uh, but that does not stop us, stop us from talking about really about anything. Because at the end, I'm going to open up for any questions. Now, if it's a question we talk significantly about, and I know we did that on week one, what I'll say is let's either talk later or why don't you go back and watch meeting number one. Depending on what it is, like I can meet right after I, that way I don't have to explain to the whole group again about a certain thing. That's why we film for people who can't be here and to just explain things so we're not talking about the same things every time. Um, but I, So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But we're also at the point where you're excited, so you're telling family, and you're saying, hey, we're going to Israel. We're 170 days out, and your family is flipping through the news at night, and they're going, I don't know if you've heard but there's no, there's not peace in the Middle East. I'm a little bit, first of all, ain't never been peace in the Middle East, okay? So, uh, so we're gonna give you opportunity at the end. You can ask questions, you can go, hey look, my family, I keep telling them I'm fine, I'm going to heaven when Jesus wants me anyway, but I'm fine, but here's what they're worried about. Probably somebody else is also thinking that. So if you just let us know that, I can give you what you need to either for you to feel comfortable or for you to tell your family, I'm fine, I'm grown, here's what's going on, I'm fine, okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll alleviate any of that to the best we can. Now, sometimes your family's just not going to be happy about you traveling anyway. Um, and you're going to have to decide if you're grown or not, and you're just going to go. So that's fine too, we can get you there. Now, let's go ahead and we're going we're gonna to start, and we're going to start with prayer, and then we're going to go on. Jenny, won't, won't you pray for us? Lord God, we love you so much. God, we thank you for this adventure that we're preparing, um, this pilgrimage, God, to walk where you walked. But God, we get to take you with us as we travel where you've been, God. God, I pray that you prepare our hearts, even starting right now, to, to see you in new ways. God, help us as we read your word. Reveal yourself to us. Help us to know you more and more. So that we're, when we walk where you walk, God, you come to life even more. God, I pray that you be with this meeting, be with the preparations for this trip. Go before us in all the ways. Thank you, God, for being a God who is with us and even goes before us. We love you so much, Lord. We're so excited. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let me go ahead and start off with just a couple of things like this. And some things we do need to mention every time because nobody really gets serious about it until like the last five minutes. And so I wanna, I want you to just, I wanna keep saying this so that whenever you start fussing about it, I can go, hey, do you remember when we talked about this, okay? So number one is this. When you read your Bible, by the way, you ought to be reading your Bible every day. Now, for some of you, I'm your pastor. So I'm telling you, you need to be reading your Bible every day. Okay, at Pebble Harvey, we have a reading plan, and we, it's not just one we push to the side. Talk to any of our Harveyans here. We, we read it the same thing every day, and as we read through that, that becomes what I preach about on Sunday, and it also becomes what many of our Sunday school classes curriculum is. So it's like walking in a class and you've studied all week alone with the Lord, and then you get together with us. That's why we do what we do. For the rest of you who do not go to our church, we're so grateful you're here. But listen, I'm going to tell you, you need to be reading your Bible every day. This is a pilgrimage. It's not so much a vacation because you're going to come back tired. Vacations, you come back refreshed. 
pilgrimages, you're going to come back with a revival. There's a difference. Refreshing means I'm ready to get back to life. I'm just, man, I'm rested. Revival is when you go, I feel rich in the Lord. Okay, that needs to start now. And uh, for instance, right now I'm reading through uh, I'm reading through First Chronicles in my time alone with the Lord, and in our church we're reading through Revelation, which you know they pretty much night and day different. But what I'm finding is in both places we are talking about significant Bible places. First Chronicles we're reading about all the cities of Judah. In Revelation we're talking about a new Jerusalem. We're going to see a lot of those. You need to kind of have heads up and your ears open to those places. But even more than just recognizing the names of places, I need you to start recognizing what's happening in these places. So that when we get to uh, Capernaum and we walk into the synagogue in Capernaum, and it talks about the man with the withered arm who Jesus makes pull back his sleeve and expose his withered arm so that Jesus makes it whole. You need to be understanding that that man, the last thing he would have ever wanted was to expose the thing he was most ashamed of. You ever seen somebody who had a scar or a birthmark on the face and they all they kind of wore their hair down covering and it was just kind of subconscious. They just, they wanted to hide that kind of stuff. You think about that man growing up in a fishing village who needed both hands to pull nets out of the water, to have an arm that didn't function. He hid that everywhere he went. He stood in ways where that was not obvious to people on the outside. When Jesus told him to stretch out his hand, probably was the most embarrassing thing he had he had drained his whole life to keep that hidden he had to release that to the lord for healing i need you to go in knowing that because when we walk into that synagogue i need you to go you know what sometimes jesus is going to call me to take what is my chief fear and weakness and 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 what what really i struggle with the most and I got to be honest about it before he can deal with it. You got to make some of those connections, but you got to start reading your Bible. And then to know that when Jesus then goes to the next story about the man being dropped down through the ceiling while he's preaching in a house, for you to understand that also happened in Capernaum. And it happened in Peter's house, two houses down from the synagogue, which is why those stories are linked. Because they left church to go to Sunday lunch that day. It was Saturday. But then they, they went there. And then and that's why all of that happens in close proximity. So that you go, oh goodness, this is why all this happens. Okay? So you need to be, you need to be reading your Bible heads up about all that. So you get the most. Now, are we going to bring all that out? Yes. Is it much easier for you to, to start to go when I say, hey, today we're going to Capernaum, which is Jesus' home base. By the way, he, he didn't live in Nazareth or Bethlehem his whole career. We good on that? He, he, in his ministry, he's living in Capernaum. When we go to Nazareth, you need to know why he's living in Nazareth. Because after Jesus and his family had exited Egypt... By the way, in reclamation of the Exodus, the Son of God comes out of Exodus and into the Promised Land again. So Jesus comes in. Why did they go to Nazareth? Because right outside Nazareth, the Romans were building a huge city and they needed master stonecutters. Nazareth was a short walk from a Jewish center to a Roman building complex. By the way, what did Joseph do for a living? We translate that word carpenter, but it's not really carpentry. They didn't have wood like we have. They didn't go cut down huge pine trees and build things. Their, their trees are little. He's a stone cutter, which is why when we call Jesus the stone that the builder rejected and the chief cornerstone, all of this imagery is playing into the fact that this is why they're living there because Joseph is a stone cutter and stone mason. Now, did he deal with uh, with with wood? Yes, you got to have some of that. But his his main job, by the way, uh, you, did you ever you ever remember watching the old Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston? 
Remember Joshua and the Ten Commandments? What was Joshua's job in that? This is a this is a play into this. Joshua was a stone cutter. Because they asked Joshua, they said, well, well you, you say you're slaves, but you look fit. He said, well, Pharaoh likes his image cut deeply in the stone. So he makes the stone cutters, he makes the stone cutters eat well. Joshua's name in the Old Testament, we call him Joshua. We call Jesus Jesus. But the Jewish people, those are both Jesus and Joshua, the same name, Yeshua. The stone which the builder rejected. Okay? All of this is going into where you're traveling. This is why knowing these places and these stories are important. For instance, and, and just as an aside from that, uh, Kay is going to invite some ladies to her house on Thursdays. Yes. T tell me a little bit about that, Kay. I don't want to get it wrong. Is it the, the 14th or Thursday? Or the 17th. Okay. So not the 14th at all. But was your address right? Okay. So on Thursday, K on whatever Thursday is, Kay's gonna have ladies at her house. Now listen, she can't have fellows at her house. This is a ladies' event. But what time, Kay? One o'clock. But the ladies can come home and teach the men. How about that? All right? So just know that. Just know that's going on. Now, uh, let me get to some other things. Now, here, here's our, here's our uh, kind of agenda today. First of all, I want to talk to you about medication. Okay? Medication. And, because it's important, right? So when we're traveling through, we're traveling through major international airports, everybody always wants to know, what do I do with my medicine? Here's what you do not do. You do not put them in your check, uh, your check luggage. If you carry blood pressure medicine, uh, diabetes medicine, whatever you got, it needs to be with you. At least, and here's why, because if they lose your luggage, I need you to have your medicine. If you leave it in, if you leave it in the bottle and you put it in your carry-on, put it in your purse, put it up, you're gonna take it with you and say, well, what about the drug sniffing dogs gonna get my, no, listen. <laughs> You are not the first person that's gone through with blood pressure medicine in, or anything else, okay? So if it's in the bottle, it's in a medicine container, and you're obviously not tra you're not obviously not trafficking, you know, 20 kilos of heroin across the border, that they know what you're doing. So, but I, I do feel like I need to say that because every time we do this, somebody will go, hey, uh, I need my, we're gonna get our bags. I, I gotta take my blood pressure medicine in my big bag. I go, you're not gonna see your blood, your blood pressure medicine for, you know, 24 hours. So that's something that goes in your check luggage. By the way, as we travel along on the plane, um, just know uh, as you travel along, uh, we have two legs on our flights. So for instance, we're gonna fly out of New Orleans, we're gonna go to Newark, we're gonna go from Newark, we're gonna go to Tel Aviv. Uh, and then on the back we're flying, on the back side, we're, we're gonna be flying British Airways on the way back just so we could get the, a, better, a better time. Um, but as we do that, you understand that when you fly, um, the flight from New Orleans to Newark is gonna be about hour and a half, two hours. It's not gonna be long, okay? Uh, now, all of that has to do with headwinds and all that kind of stuff, we understand that. But what I do need you to understand is, if your plan is to get on the plane and pop an Ambien, and just go, I'm gonna wake up in Israel. <laughs> Let's not do that till we hit the Newark airport, okay? <laughs> what I don't need is to be carrying anybody like firefighter style out of a building to the next gate. Uh, so let's stay awake. On, I mean, I don't care if you sleep, but let's be able to wake up, okay? <laughs> and, and you laugh. This is every time, okay? So 
so we just just know and by the way i do suggest that you bring something to help you sleep hitting a melatonin on that long on that long is not a bad move okay um because i i, I often like a melatonin i, I can't take a lot of it because i just I, I can't handle medicine <laughs> But I might take a, a little sliver of one to kind of get me sleepy on a plane because I'm sitting up and you know how planes work. Like this is this is how you're supposed to fly. And then if you want to be extra comfortable, you hit that button and it lets you recline deeply like <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, this, uncomfortable, comfortable. That's that's how that works. So what I'm saying is if you struggle to sleep, because I do, and I listen, I have bought everything under the sun. That like I got this inflatable thing you like hug and put your face in. <laughs> Jenny laughs, but it's just it's what I got to do to survive. Okay, so I, I, if you're gonna do that, just know let's do that when we get to Newark. All right. Um, the other thing is, uh, it, you know, you can also carry that in your check luggage. They're not gonna have any trouble with that. I would recommend uh, in your check luggage as we go through that. I would recommend uh, bringing. Uh, a, tra a small light, even a disposable toothbrush that, that you know, you can get those disposable toothbrush with the toothpaste kind of in it. Wisps. Yeah, you go over wisps or something like that. And here's the thing, it, I put all of like my toiletries and stuff there in my check bag. I'm not trying to carry all that through the airport. But I do like to, when, I, when, when we get to a certain place, after I've been sitting for, you know, nine, 10 hours, I would like to not offend the person next to me with body odor or something. So there are some key things you can do that I think are that I think are wise, that are smart. So let, let's let's do that. Um, le, also, now let's yeah. Would you recommend leaving medication in the prescription bottle, or can we cut out one of those day planners? Uh, they are pretty good with the day planners. For me, I always prefer leaving it in the bottle. And the only reason is why is because 99.999% of the time, they look at you and they go, well, you got three blood pressure pills, you're fine. You know, and like they don't get, but the one time they would, would be the time when we're trying to get 59 people through there. So, but if you've got it in a prescription bottle, they don't, they don't bat an eye to that. So, whereas you can, I would recommend if at all possible. And really, it's kind of one of those things where you go, okay, I just got a new prescription. It's 30 days, but it's, we're, it, ours is only going to, I'm only going to need nine days worth. It's kind of one of those things where you just take out what you need, you know, at the house and just bring what you're going to use on the trip in that bottle. Maybe a couple of extra just in case, I don't know. But, uh, but, you, but you have it there. When you get home, you just put the rest back in there. How you handle that is your business. That would just be my personal recommendation. Uh, but good question. All right, let's talk. Let's talk money and credit cards. Okay. Um, first of all, we are going to be able to shop a lot on the trip. Okay. Matter of fact, you are going to be treated like royalty because you are coming into a very rich tourism environment. I'm gonna, and I and I, I tell I tell y'all this a few times as we meet, and it's just because it's true. If you will just watch me, I'll tell you where to shop. And the reason is because most of these trips are designed in a way where you you start out at really basically the same thing, and then all these trips lead to the empty tomb. Okay, that's how these trips are set up because we know how to build them into, but a lot of people follow some sort of similar. For instance, we're gonna go to, we're gonna go to Tell Dan in, in North Israel, they're going to places, but you're gonna get there on like day two. You're not getting there on the last day of the trip. Well, on day two, you're gonna see a shop and they're gonna sell everything you're gonna see on day nine but it's gonna be more expensive up here because you're so excited. You're going, I, I gotta get this and bring it home to my grandbaby. And so they're willing to charge you a little more because you had not spent any money yet and you're excited. Whereas if you would just look at me and go, hey, I really like that t-shirt. My answer is always gonna be, if you like it, it's yours. It go, listen, it's just money, you go, you go spend it. 
But if you'll watch me, I'll give you, I'll just, I'll just kind of give you like, and I'm not going to be rude and I'm not going to embarrass our group in front of somebody. So if Dean is trying to sell me something and I know I can get it later, here's what I'll do. I'll go, that is beautiful, 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 beautiful. And I like, I'll, and I'll just be looking and I'll go, I'll go, Hey, y'all should, y'all should look at this. If I, if I think it's a good time to buy, I'll, uh, I'll kind of give you the old, and we'll have people who will come to our bus and, uh, I'm going to, I guard the door of our bus and our guide does and our driver does. Uh, but like they're, they, they make a living by standing next to buses and selling scarves and hats. Okay. So every once in a while to be nice, I might, I might just pick up one of their scarves and I go, Hey, they, they selling three scars for, for $10. Anybody, anybody want one? They are beautiful. All right. Thank you. Very, and he's good. Cause I, we've made an effort. If I go, Hey y'all, this is a really good deal. Um, and, uh, and you know, and I, I'll, you will know when I'm telling you this is something good. Cause here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to shop anywhere and spend our money. Now you can spend your money wherever you want to. I'm not going to endorse a store that we're not confident, number one, that if you run a credit card, something may, something may happen, okay? The places that I take you to and go, you can shop here however you want to, you can rest assured they're going to take care of you in swiping your car. Like, you're not going to have to worry about that. I can't promise that everywhere, just like I can't promise you if you go to a gas pump that something, somebody may not be fishing. But listen, I, I can I can take you to places we can trust. So you will know when it's good to shop. I'll also let you know when you're gonna find something at a better deal. And if you find something you really like and it's expensive, if you'll just come to me and say, hey, I really want this. Let me go talk to them. I love that. I love to take something that's this much and get it to about this much because really they're, they're selling it for this. They didn't tell you that. They started up here because it's like buying a used car. You, there's some wiggle room in there. I like to find the wiggle room, all right? They're going to make money. You're going to be happy. It's going to be fine. But you don't don't walk in somebody somewhere and they you go, that's a beautiful that's a beautiful picture or rug. And you go, and they go, yeah, that's going to be $500. And you go, great. Don't do that, okay? Because that's not how it works. <laughs> That's how it works at Dillard's, but that ain't how it works over, over there, all right? So just be careful. Uh, also, when you bring money, and however much money you bring is gonna be fine. I will tell you this, that you want your money in small bills. And uh, you wanna keep access to small bills in small increments. For instance, you may keep a hundred dollars in a little pocket on a side of your of a purse or whatever, but you may have it in fives, ones, and tens, because you don't want to open up your wallet and have eight hundred dollars in anything when you're buying a twenty dollar scarf. They just just don't, okay? But if somebody if they're charging you twelve dollars for a hat. You don't give them a 20 and then, cause they're going to give you change back in Israeli shekels and you don't know how much that stuff is anyway. So you give them $12. You give them a 10 and two ones. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, so just, we're going to make sure that nowhere we tell you to shop, you are you going to have to worry about your money funneling somewhere through some cousin that would make a danger situation for a Jewish or Christian person living somewhere in the world. We, we're going to shop in Jewish and Christian stores that are good people trying to make a living. The Muslims won't shop there. The Muslim tourists will not shop at their stores and we want them to be able to feed their families and to and to do good. And so we're, that's, that's the kind of places we're gonna shop. Um, if you see high-end retail things, um, just understand it's like, it's like buying sunglasses or a fancy purse in Times Square. 
if they're selling a pair of fancy sunglasses or a purse in Times Square, it probably is not genuine. If you're okay with that, great. Just know that going in. If it's if the deal sounds too good to be true, it is, okay? But you can also get some really great things. By the way, if you are going and you go, I want a diamond. Israel is the top place for diamonds in the world. Not only are they good prices, but every diamond produced goes through Israel for cut quality. They, they produce the world's diamonds. Even if countries hate them, they have to use them for diamonds. If any of you ladies are wearing a diamond on your finger, right, it came through Israel at some point in the process. So um, if we, uh, if you're looking to, ladies, if you're looking to upgrade while you're there, <laughs> we can we can take you to a spot where where that's where that's going to be okay. All right, credit cards. Most all major credit cards are going to be accepted, but call the company and have them put a note on there that that is you. We're going to tell you where you where you can swipe, not have to worry. We're going to we're going to take care of don't 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 worry about any of that. Uh, but if you're going to take cash, fine. If you're going to take card, fine. Uh, we'll 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 take care we'll take care of that. Does anybody have any questions on anything? I'm on this is about a third of the way through the information. Any question on th anything we've talked about so far? Are we flying at night this time? Uh, not as much at night as we flew last time. Last time, and which I, I tried really hard to do this, last time on our last day, we went back to the hotel, showered, had a special dinner. They prepared, prepared a traditional dinner just for our group, and a little, little dancing and singing. And then we just got on the bus and went to the airport, and so we flew overnight, which was great. Those were COVID hours. Remember, we were wearing masks last time, too. Um, well, on the flights. As soon as we got to Israel, they said, take them off, you look dumb. So we did. <laughs> and so, uh, but they were running a little spread out schedule to kind of accommodate the, the flow, uh, really to kind of keep numbers down in the airport. I tried for that, and uh, doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that. Kinda, they're kind of back to their normal stuff, but I wish, I wish. Um, Anyway, uh, but if you go back to meeting number one, I did tell the times and departures for each place. We will have a couple of a la hour layover in Newark um, when we're there. So we'll, you'll eat dinner at the airport in Newark that day. Just, just know that. Um, uh, as far as money, the only things you're going to need, okay, uh, you'll need lunch money for the trip. Your breakfasts are taken care of, full buffet. Your dinners are gonna be great. They're gonna be full buffet. At lunch, some people are ready, wanna eat lunch every day. Some people are full from like breakfast and travel. They, they don't wanna eat, that's fine. You don't have to. Uh, but if, I, I would say if you just plan on a $20 bill, you get whatever you want to at lunch. And just if you plan on that for lunch each day of the trip, you're fine. Uh, cash for yeah, typically that's cash. You can run a card, but cash is easier because they'll just kind of take it as we go through the line. I would suggest cash for that. Um, you will, uh, of course, you'll need you'll you'll need money for any souvenirs, and but just know this: um, all of your tips are also included in your pricing. So you'll find some trips that are cheaper than ours. Um, but what they don't tell you is your tips and taxes and all have to be paid when you get there. And you're tipping everybody for everything. Remember, it's a tourism industry. So the guys who unload your luggage off the bus, the guys who bring you a, a, a bottle of water here and there, you will, like, they all get tips. Entry fees to everywhere we're going. The way we do it, we build that into your price so you don't have to worry about anything. The only thing, I, the only tip I would want you to be prepared for, and this is optional, hear me, optional, is that at the end of the trip, you are going to love, love, love our tour guide. And I'm gonna tell you who you're gonna be really impressed with is our bus driver. You're gonna see him take a 60 passenger <laughs> bus and turn it on a dime and put it in a spot you said it is impossible. 
And so what you're going to want to do, is you're going you're gonna to start asking on the trip, hey, can we, can we give them a tip? They've just been great. And here's what I do. The last day, I'll just, I'll have my baseball hat on. I'll say, hey, if you want to give it, but look, we're already tipping them. Now, it's a modest tip where you're, you're not being gouged at all. But if you say, I've got 20 extra dollars, I didn't spend it on a hat, I want to thank our guide and our, and our, and our bus driver. We'll pass a hat, 100% of that goes to them. That'd be the only other thing. Um, if you have dollars, so during the, uh, during the trip, and I, I'm going to encourage you to bring a water bottle every day. You fill it up at breakfast, you just take it with you. But if you get on the trip and you just you like to drink a lot of water, we have a cooler, it's a refrigerator built into the front dash of the bus, and they'll sell, our bus driver will sell cold water on there all day, every day. And if you just say, look, I, I know I'm gonna get one, and you just put a $5 bill in the bucket, it's an honor system, you get five bottles of water, get them whenever you want them. You will, we're gonna make you hydrate, okay? Hydrate, 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 but it's, it's cheap. Okay, so I'm just trying to think of anything you might want money for uh, would be any extra tip you want to do, which is optional. Uh, bottles of water during the day if you just get extra parched uh, and then your lunches. Um, everywhere we stop, there'll be a coffee bar. Like if you think you see a lot of like coffee shops locally, just understand we don't know nothing about coffee until you get there. Okay, every place is a coffee shop. And so you go, I really like coffee. Well, get you some. I'm going to get some everywhere we stop. And they're only going to sell about that much at a time. But that's all you need. That's like a pot of coffee. So you chew it as it goes down because it's pretty, it's pretty good. But listen, you give me about six of those by 10 a.m., I'm having a good time, okay? Uh, so just that that's a lot of people wonder, well, do, what do we need money for? You, you technically don't if you don't want Just get on it. Uh, come on with us, but that would be any of the extras I would say. Um, Can I tell them a little bit about lunch? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, because I know this is food's important to a lot of people. Um, mornings and nights, we have a humongous buffet where we are. You pretty much can take your pick of what you have. Lunch, we go to one place pretty much, and it's different every day, but it just depends on where we are, and for the most part, you get two options everywhere we go. One is falafel, and one is this, it's similar to a gyro. It's pita with chicken, shawarma? Is it's that called shawarma, it's yeah. fried, okay. well, yes, yes, okay. shaved chicken. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, I just want you to know what to expect for lunches. Um, also, there's a purpose behind that. I'm really excited for you to meet our guide, Fote. He's become a really good friend of ours but he has a mission mind. And so some of those places he takes us, he knows it's really benefiting the families. It's almost, it's a ministry, it's a mission where we go for lunch. So lunch is gonna be less about the fancy. I love that food, the Mediterranean style food, but some people who are pickier eaters, maybe take a to-go banana or apple at breakfast and save it. Yeah, uh, when you, and Jenny did talk about options uh, at your hotel, they're going to serve Mediterranean style dishes. They're going to, and they're also going to have like baked chicken and vegetables. If you want to eat healthy on the trip, you really can. Mm -hmm. Falafel is, um, is, is, uh, is fried chickpeas and they put in a pita bread and you eat them like a sandwich out of a pita. I love them. They're great. Um, they also have the shawarma, which is shredded chicken and you, you kind of fill up your pita like you would a sandwich lettuce, tomato and stuff in there. Hummus. Uh, and then that, that with hummus. Oh, uh, well, uh, no, they're good. They're super good. Chickpeas, well, same stuff you make hummus you out of. Leave here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but also they have things like, uh, they have schnitzel, which is basically fried chicken patties. And so you, you would just put a fried, they put a fried chicken pit patty in a, in yeah. a pita for you and you eat it as a sandwich. So like uh, their fast food. It, that yeah. is their fast food. This is their fast food option. So we would have burgers. They're going to have, they're going to have these things. They're great. Um, please smile and be act nice. Like you like it. Yeah. Please act like you like it. But yeah, uh, our guide Fote has a, has a ministry on the side 
where he he builds he does he does community and after school ministry with uh, with Muslims, um, and so so a lot of times we're going to places and that we can trust. Why? And he's also talking to people because they're coming to faith in Jesus. He lives inside a Muslim um, apartment complex and neighborhood. Like all this is missional for him. Um, so please, like if you don't like it. Let me know. We'll we'll because they're also serving personal pan pizzas just about everywhere you go. Just just be nice, okay? Just be nice because remember the relationships at those places are are more important long term than I, I really didn't like falafel, okay? So trying trying to say that nicely and you'll be fine. We've never had a problem with that, but just I do want you to know up front, kind of there is a reason behind that. Um, next thing is our bus. Uh, our bus is a uh, is a 59 passenger bus plus our driver. Um, it, and here's what we're gonna do: when we get off the airplane, we're gonna go. Typically, we get to Israel uh, mid afternoonish. So for them, that's gonna be about five o'clock. We'll we'll be on the bus by five. So we we'll get there four. We go get our luggage. We're gonna get on the bus. Uh, depending on the weather. I will normally take you to Joppa, which is right outside Tel Aviv. It, it is Tel Aviv. Joppa, they'll call it Joppa, J-O-F-F-A. Your Bible will call it Joppa, J-O-P-P-A. That's where Jonah got on the ship and where Peter was on the rooftop when he saw the vision of the sheep coming up and out. We'll go, we'll go watch sunset on the Mediterranean at that port, okay? Then we'll go to our hotel, we'll have dinner, we'll go to bed. Now that depends on flight schedules, and that depends on weather, and that depends on how grumpy y'all are. So sometimes I just need to get y'all fed, you know? <laughs> and we'll, and so a lot of that just depends, but we'll, we'll see. But we'll get on the bus, and it doesn't matter where you sit when we get on the bus, that's fine. But on day one, morning one, we will tell you, be on the bus by this time. Uh, just know, ours is not a sleep-in trip. And I need you to know that up front. So some groups will go, we're going to leave at 9 a.m., sleep in, have a good breakfast, get on the bus. We're going to want you on the bus probably before 8 o'clock every day at the latest. Here's why. Because as tourism picks up in Israel, I don't want to be in line behind 10 buses getting to our sites. I want to be at the front of those, but because we're all paying good money to, to be part of this. I want to be, I want to be in places, not in a rush. I don't want to wait in line. I, we're going to, we're going to get places. And you'll notice a lot of guys are going to want to shut things off at a certain time of day. So he can be back at the, 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 the hotel and, and resting. Older guys will do that, or guys are just, they're ready to clock out. Our guy is not like that. <laughs> just know, you have an itinerary on the brochure you got. That is only the tip of the iceberg of what you're actually going to see. We we go everywhere we can. As a matter of fact, there's a whole lot of days where we're just, we're driving, and he and I are going to sit up front, and we know where we're going, and I'm going to go, look, how are we doing on time? He goes, he goes, we're, we're actually, we're, we're about 40 minutes ahead of schedule. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm going good. All right. Then here's what I want to do. Uh, I want to go, let's, let's stop here, here, and here. And he'll go, he'll go. All right. He'll start making phone calls and we're going to, we'll just stop at places where we, we don't tell you up front we're going there because there's a chance they may not be open. Sometimes we even get in places that aren't open because we got some connections and, and we just kind of sweet talk them a little bit. And so just know your itinerary is your itinerary, but you're going to, you're going to see more, but you're also going to leave the hotel earlier than other groups. And you're going to get back later than other groups. Now that's going to help you because you're going to beat them to breakfast and you're, they're going to be out of the way by dinner. But again, those of you who are going back, just y'all know we're, we're going to see this stuff. We're not going to, we're not going to rest. You can sleep on the bus, by the way. But there you go. That's about it. All right. All right. Um, things to, let me see. Okay. So on day one, you get on the bus. We'll tell you to get on the bus. And when you get on the bus, just know this. And I'm going to tell you the night before. 
I'm going to tell you that when you get on the bus, get on the bus with any friends that you have or that you've made and sit around the same area. Because when we get on the bus on day one, you're going to sit in your seat that you are going to have for the trip. There's a few reasons for that. Number one is this. I want everybody to know I got my seat. Okay. Number two, by the way, if you're in the back of the bus, it's a great place to be because we have a, a secondary door in the back of the bus. So when we stop, we open all doors on the bus. Those in the back are the first to get off. Those in the front are the first. And in the middle, it moves so quick, you're going to get off the bus quickly. So don't worry about that. You're also going to, I also use it for keeping attendance. So I can look up, I can get my little microphone and go, all right, we're, uh, we're about to leave. Uh, everybody look around, see if you got an empty seat around you, who's missing? And, and then somebody will go, well, uh, Melissa's seat's empty. I'll go, well, okay, then she, and then and we're, we're, we know we're waiting on her. That helps us, I've done that. Um, we know we, that helps us keep attendance. But listen, you are not missing anything by not sitting in a particular place on the front. Uh, we had somebody one time tell me, I want to sit in the front of the bus with you and the guide because that's where the action is. And I'm going, ma'am, if you think, <laughs> if you think I'm doing anything up here other than planning our next stop or chugging a bottle of water, getting ready for our next stop, you are vastly overestimating my, my stamina. So uh, just find you a comfy spot and sit by friends, okay? And if you say, I don't have any friends, it's a great chance to make some friends, okay? All right. Uh, the guy, you and the guy, when you talk on the bus, he uses a speaker That's right. Microphone. That's right. So while, so we're driving, while we're driving, we have a little microphone, and we'll say things like, hey, if you look out your left, your left side right now, you're going to see such and such. Like, we're not, we, we not going to have private conversation. You will hear everything we got going. I do need us to show some decorum just a little bit, though. We are going to ride by shepherds in the field keeping watch over their flocks. I don't care how many times I've seen that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be like, wow. Look at them shepherds. They got a stick and everything. And we'll take a group and look, look. We'll, we'll drop by camels, like leading herds of Bedouin through the wilderness. And you're going to go, wow. We're going to see shepherds keeping watching and like leading goats. with like hitting them on the rear end with like a little, a little piece of grass. And just, I mean, masterful. Do you know what y'all get the most excited to see? Cows. <laughs> it never felt. We're driving by and there's like cows in a pack. Oh, there's some cows, Brother Dusty. <laughs> I'm like, y'all ain't never been down Carterville Road? Like, there's cows. Don't embarrass us by being so excited about cows, okay? Yes, they look delicious in their natural form. I got that. But just, just, let's, let's, let's be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool, all right? See a camel and act more impressed with the camel, okay? All right. There is no chill. Yeah, yeah no, there's no chill. Everybody's so fired up. Look at those cows. Did you see those cows? Yes, I saw the cows. That's all. All right. Things to avoid. I have a good friend who recently went through the airport. As he was going through his airport, he his backpack he was carrying was a gun was a was a was a bag he carried to the gun range for target practice. He had no guns, no bullets, no nothing. But fellas. What comes off of a gun after you've been shooting? Gunshot residue. So when you walk through and you got you got detectors everywhere, what does it smell? Now, does he go to jail for that? No. They go, sir, could you open up your bag? And they go, all right, you don't have a gun, thanks. All right, but you know what it does? It scares you and it slows you down. Don't do that. If you have a belt, or, some of you are concealed carry people. So if you've got a belt and a pair of pants you typically wear and you're, and you're packing and, uh, and there's GSR on, on a belt or something, 
just know there's a chance that as we go through a checkpoint that the little beagle that's inside the airport is going is going is going to hit on you and they're going to swab and they're going to see so just know going in uh be careful with that okay uh wash your clothes wear a different belt carry a different backpack just just know that going in okay also don't carry a ham and cheese sandwich off the plane in the bag because the doggy who sniffs for drugs also likes ham and cheese. <laughs> and he will he will he will come to your bag and they think you're smuggling cocaine. But no, the doggy needs his lunch break. That's what's happening. Just know that happens. So just be wise. Um um also I'm going to recommend you not, and by the way, this is totally up to you. This is just my, my, my speech on avoiding. So when we travel, avoid wearing uh, military style or hunting style camouflage. Okay? Um, airports do not profile. But I'm always pulled out for profiling. Always. Me, the little old lady in the wheelchair, and the dark complected man going back home to the Middle East, we're all going to get pulled out of line. Nine times out of 10, it's a fast process, but they pull us three out so they can mainly focus on one without saying we don't profile. Whitey McWhiterson is not in the profile, but it helps to say when they, when they, listen, but if you walking through wearing a tactical backpack and you got military style fatigues on, just know you're going to be in the back of the line at the security desk. They're going to clear you, but you are automatically going to be that. Now I'll, I'll, I'll say this too. I am as patriotic as they come. I probably will not wear my long sleeve American flag shirt as I'm walking through multiple other countries. I know we think they all love us, but they may not. Um, I, I may not think it's wise to, to wear, listen, we're gonna be coming out of po the, the political season no, 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 we're going into the political season. Any particular candidate's gear that you got swag, just understand, they know a lot about American politics and they have opinions because news dominates. And so, I, look, they'll, I'll, I'll have friends over there and they'll go, hey, uh, tell me about uh, such and such. Like, they'll want to know about what I think about certain politicians. I may not have anything nice to say, so I don't say anything at all, <laughs> okay? So what I'm saying is, I'm not gonna tell you what to, what to wear, how, that, that's up to you. I'm just saying there are some things that you can do that can make sure no, you don't, nothing slows down in the process. Is that, you know, that kind of, is that muddy enough and clear enough? Okay, all right, so there you go. Now, let's do this, let's talk uh, let's talk fears, worries, family, and questions. All right, we got about 10 minutes. And then once we exceed that 10 minutes, then, uh, then we'll do questions. You can stay afterwards and ask me anything. But what are your questions? What are your families worried about? What do we need to help you with? Yes, sir. Tell us about the telephone cord we need to get one more time to charge over there. All right. What do we need to ask for? Okay. So, uh, so on the, the, the last meeting we have, we posted, I, I brought it, it's a two pronged, two cylinder hookup. Um, I will post again, another link to a, like an Amazon picture of one. I'll post it on our Facebook group so that you, so that you can see those two dials again. Uh, but look, don't get, don't, don't spend a ton of money on those things. Like, don't go up and go, oh, I want a, I want a high dollar converter for, okay, just know the converters don't, they're not converting much, they're gonna burn up. So buy just simple attachments. 
something you plug into something that's going to plug into something else. Your hair dryer, I know that your fancy converter says it's going to work fine. Look at me. It is not going to work fine. It's going to burn it up. You're, you're going to lose a hair dryer. You're going, you're going to lose it. So just use the one in the room. Yeah. Okay? Um, just it, they're they're easy, but I will I will uh, remind me to do that, please. Uh, I'll put another picture on our Facebook and say this is what that looks like, and you can find them. You can find them at Walmart here. You can find them at Target. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them really anywhere you go because they're they're widely used. Good question. Yes, sir, Ronnie. Charging bridge. Is there any reason why they wouldn't Oh, like external, like know. external target. Jenny takes hers everywhere she goes. Yeah, so, uh, so yes, bring them. Do not put those in your check bag. They need to go into your carry on. Yeah. Okay. So as long as you have them in your carry on, you're fine. And I suggest them, but just know this: I really only suggest them for the airports because uh, because if you'll just bring your phone cord. It's got USB. Every chair has a USB connection. You can charge your phone on the bus as we're driving to locations, and you can just do it that way. So either or, but also also great question. Also remember, the bus does have Wi-Fi. So some of you are talking about how do I buy international plans? You can do that. All you got to do is call your uh, call your service provider. They'll they'd be happy to let you pay for an international <laughs> plan, or you can do this log on to the Wi-Fi and FaceTime whoever you need to talk to. It's free. It's over Wi-Fi. Wasn't there USB plug-ins in the hotel room? On the TV. Yeah. There are, they're all yeah. on the TV. They're all on the TV, yes. Uh, matter of fact, Jenny and I have a charging brick that we, we travel with, and it's, a, it's, it's just one piece, and it's got like six USB and just one of the two prongs. So we plug it up in one place on the coffee table, and then we can plug all of our charging USB charging cords into it. So we charge our phones, our watches overnight, anything. We, well, that's how we charge. And so it's not much to carry with us, but, you know, that's just what we do. Okay. Other question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do we as women anywhere um, like the Western world, we need a head covering or anything? No. Matter of fact, the only people who need a head covering at the, at the Western wall are men. So the men, whenever we go to the Western Wall, first of all, ladies' clothing. You can wear pants. You can wear capris. Um, they, you, you, they're not going to bother you on whatever you wear. Now wear something. Wear something that you would. Uh, you, wear something that you would wear. <laughs> I mean, we're, we ain't Europeans, so just keep it all covered up. That'd be great. But like a lot of people think, oh, the women have to wear long dresses and that stuff everywhere. No, you don't. Wear, wear whatever you want to is fine. Uh, we go to the Western Wall. Good question about a head covering. Uh, remember the, the ladies, God gave them hair to be their covering. So the Jewish women do not have to worry about that. Some of us, however, don't have enough hair to be our covering. So uh, when we go to the Western Wall to pray, uh, the men will have to wear a head covering. So we approach the Western Wall. This is a good kind of etiquette thing. We approach the Western Wall, understanding that the, 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 the rabbis will be there different times praying. By the way, they're super nice guys. Say hello to them. They'll say hello back. They're glad that you're there. Uh, but you walk up to the Western Wall. Men have your head covered. If you're wearing a baseball cap, you're fine. If not, there's a little booth there that the Western Wall Society provides a little yarmulkes. Even when I'm wearing a ball cap, and by the way, I'm wearing a ball cap every day. Just know that. Uh, I'm also going to get a yarmulke because, I mean, Souvenir. When, when in Rome, there's the Romans, right? So I'm going to wear my yarmulke, and I'm going to go up to the Western Wall, and I'm going to pray. So you go to the Western Wall, and then uh, you don't turn your back on it immediately. So you kind of step out like this until you get to kind of a, a good distance away. You'll see others, and then you turn and you walk off. Just as a sign of respect, like not turning your back on that. Remember that you're 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 in their country. You're going to kind of follow their customs. Uh, the the men's side there is a men's side for prayer and a women's side for prayer. They do not mingle. So there's a wall. It's just not a wall. It's a, a, partition, a per, partition. 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 Parti there's, a, there's a wall over it. And that yeah. So there are two separate sides. But you go into them from the same, and then you you come right back out. I mean it's it's it's. It's nothing, but good question.
Good question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the temperature, what's it going to be like over there? Well, <coughs> as, uh, as many of us know, uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> so uh, when we go to the Dead Sea, it'll be warm enough to, uh, to swim. When we go to the Jordan, it'll be, it'll be warm enough to wear shorts and a t-shirt uh, to be baptized in, but the water will be freezing. Um, so just know that if you're planning on being baptized in the Jordan, cook a cold, okay? That water's cold. It's coming off the slopes of Mount Hermon. It is, it is cold. Um, even down south near the Dead Sea. Then uh, typically we're gonna do baptism and the Dead Sea on the same day. There, we can go. We go to pretty much the, the. There are a couple of spots to get baptized. I like the spot where they're kind of in the same spot. So we get on the bus and go to the next spot, and you just stay in your wet clothes and go get in the Dead Sea. So you will have one wet day, and you can like we're we're not gonna that way. Just kind of keeps it easier with your luggage and your your travel and all. I recommend uh, you know bringing clothes to get baptized. They're gonna give you a robe. Uh, and then when you get to the Dead Sea, wear the same clothes and just throw them away. Yeah. You're never getting the salt out of them. They just look, look, they gone. All right. Um, several people asked, did you bring a towel or do they furnish the towel? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. They furnish a towel. Um, well, here, here's the thing. One place they they we pay we pay to get you in to baptize. Okay, and they'll give you a towel and your robe is yours, and you take them home. Okay. The the other place we go, uh, and it just depends on which one we decide to go to on that day. Uh, I, we'll get the hotel to furnish towels. So we'll take them. You'll draw off. We'll collect them. We get back to the hotel. We'll give them to laundry service. They'll take care of it. So don't bring don't bring a towel. Okay. Um, so on some days it'll be hot. Some days it'll be cold. Uh, I would say it's going to be more on the cool side the majority of the days, which means I, I'm going to probably end up wearing a polo shirt and jeans every day, and I'll have in my backpack, I'll have a, uh, a little light jacket and maybe an umbrella or a heavier jacket that's also waterproof, which is probably what I'll do. And because uh, I, when, I, when I'm warm, I need to be warm, and when it rains, because it is going to rain, uh, it will have something. So do what? Only one day. Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Just that's true. Day. I'll I'll be sure to schedule that one day of rain for a, a good day for us. Um, so that's that's basically that on weather. It's 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 gonna be it's gonna be warm in the north. It's gonna be warm in the south. It's gonna be cold in the middle. Uh, I will also pack in my bag a pair of gloves and a little knit hat. Um, and I, last time we went, I never used it, but the time before I used them almost every day. So it just kind of depends on, it's like living in Mississippi. I mean, who knows? Other than right layers. now, you know it's gonna be hot. Bring layers. Bring layers. Yes, ma'am. Will there be any times that the ladies will need a dress? No times they'll need a dress. If you would like to wear a dress, great. Uh, but there's no time we're gonna tell you, you gotta have a dress to walk in this church. Well, we won't do that. All right, we got time for one more question before we shut it down, and then if you have any other questions, you, we can do after. Yes, ma'am. Not a question, just something through the airport. No pepper spray, no Leathermans. We use them all the time. Uh, pocket knives. Don't okay. Use. Yes, pocket knives. Now, now look. Everybody, every fellow, ought to have a pocket knife. I'm not. I mean. I'm not saying you have to, I'm just saying it's in the Bible that you ought to. Okay? <laughs> so uh, every time I travel, I, and, I, and I keep and keep one on my keys. And so every time I travel, I just take it off and I leave it in the glove box of my truck and we, we get on the plane. Last time we went to Israel, I got out of my truck, walk into the airport, put my keys in my pocket, put my keys then in my backpack. They flew to Israel with my knife still on it. Oh, wow. I don't know how it happened, but I ain't doing it again. And they checked you, too. And they checked me. They always check me. It's your me. Bible. I know. It is. I know. I know. Okay. I know. All right. So, anyway, uh, yes. Pepper spray. Don't bring your pepper spray. Don't bring your guns. Don't bring your knives. And we should be okay. All right? Yes, ma'am. So you said we, we can wear freezer pants, but like on this day of baptizing or swimming, we can bring shorts. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. That's right. They're going to give you a robe. So you wear anything you want to under the robe. Now, I do need to, I, I, I probably do need to let you know the baptismal situation. It's a situation. Depending on where we go, because there's two baptism sites. One is much uh, nicer and the other is more authentic. Matter of fact, down near Jericho, where we're going to go, uh, down near the Dead Sea is the more authentic site. Which one did we go to the last time? The we went to the the nicer site mm -hmm. last time. So, so we hadn't been to the other. Okay, yeah, you hadn't been to the other. Okay, so if we go to the more traditional site, you're going down where Jesus was probably baptized, down in the south, near Qumran, Jericho. That's where John the Baptist was baptized. That's where Jesus was baptized. Okay, we'll go down there if if that's where we baptize. I don't know yet. Just we'll we'll see when we get there. Um, so if you go there on that on that. They'll just know the dressing situation is not so much a dressing room as it is they have a bunch of curtains in a circle and they say that's the women's curtain and that's the men's curtain. If you are at all modest, go to the bathroom. Don't be that day. <laughs> or wait in line to get into the little bathroom to change there. It just evidently no other country in the world is as modest as we are because the Europeans sure don't care, okay? For real. <laughs> so, there you go. The other one, I would say, if we go to the nicer, you do get your own changing stall, little showers, I mean, nice, and they, and little, little, little walkways down to the wall. It is much nicer. The problem with it is, it's, it's hard on your feet. So one, I would say, you, you don't need anything. But the other I would say, if I could tell you anything, is to get a cheap pair of water shoes if you want to be baptized, and for the Dead Sea. A cheap pair of water shoes at Walmart, five bucks, that with a little rubber sole on the bottom, that it, that if you stepping on pebbles, it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt you. So I would just tell I would just tell you, bring a cheap pair of water shoes for don't bring flip-flops. Don't lose them. Because you're gonna lose them. Because I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the flip-flops are gone. Okay? <laughs> that's how that works. So, water shoes, water shoes. All right? That's, uh, that, listen, I don't want to keep you beyond your time. If you've got more questions, see me. Uh, Sonia, I need to see you talk to, about your brother real quick. And then, uh, and then, and then we're going to go. Uh, if you have more questions, just come line up right here, and we'll work through them. All right? Uh, if you have passports, come see me. We'll go to the office and we'll make copies of your passports. If you have payments, come see me. We'll go to the office and we'll take payments and we'll we'll put them in the deposit box. Is there a certain time we've got to have? Is there another date for deadline for payments? Or yes, we're we pay twenty five percent basically every every six weeks. Um, I'll put out I'll put out on there when they when all that's coming. You should be getting those emails. When you get an email, it's another payment stream. Okay, so let me pray for us and we'll be done. Lord Jesus, we love you. We pray that you would bless us and get us ready for a fantastic pilgrimage. Father, we pray for the weather. We pray for great weather. Father, we pray that you would hear the prayer of the farmer for the rain, but that the rain would be at night while we're in our hotel. And you would hear the, the prayer of the pilgrim for beautiful sunny skies during the day while we're traveling and looking at your creation. But, Father, we trust you for whatever weather you'd like to give us. We, we just want to be in your land. Lord, we pray for great flights, easy flights, all of our connections made, no problems, no hiccups. But, Lord, we also surrender that your way is the best way, and we believe you to work all things together for good for those that love you and are called according to your purpose. So, Lord, we ask that you keep blessing us and preparing us for this trip. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We'll see you later.